basically in the past if you wanted to get the platform builder tool of Visual Studio, you had to almost go to a distributor. And there's about you know, five major ones. And usually they would grill you with a lot of questions because they wanted to get other leads and some other things. So they ask you, what's the volume of your project? What are you doing? And it's just me. So it was a little bit difficult to convince them sometimes. And on top of that, if they did want to sell it to you, it was a thousand dollars pretty much. So it sounds like it made it really easy for you to get a hold of that kit. Yeah. So for myself, it was a little bit difficult um, at first, especially the thousand dollars trying to overcome that. Now with the Spark program, you guys really changed all of that because pretty much I was able to go online, go to the Spark web page, um, get the tools that I needed and all the software and drivers, as well as uh, have a variety of different hardware platforms that I can choose from that were expensive, 200, uh, and even actually even less, even $100 to $400 for the most uh, advanced hardware kit. So how much would that have cost you before? Well, obviously the software, $1,000, and then I would have had to get a normal development uh, kit, so anywhere from uh, 400 to you know, $3,000. And again, those are harder to get because you have to go directly either to the manufacturer um, or you have to go through a distributor and they, again, you're stuck in the same situation where they don't want to sell you just one kit or one module. Now, once you signed up for the Spark Imagination Kit, how long did it take you to get that? I mean, it was just normal. I just had to, well, the tools were immediate and I could just download the tools and install them. Obviously, the hardware had to come by mail, so that's like a you know, UPS ground five days. But, <laughs> uh, but anyways, after getting the tools and everything, I started on my project. I don't know about you, but I've always liked those in-home media stations. You know, I see them in a lot of expensive homes that I've been in. You walk up to a wall, and it's got a screen embedded in the wall, and you can select uh, media and browse through your media on your media server, or look at pictures, and do some other things. So I thought that I would try to make one of those. Um, so that's what I did. So the first thing I want to show you guys on my laptop here, whoa, I don't fall over, um, is I have up Visual Studio right now. And this is basically my project. Um, all I did was just choose a, a, a default template that's in the platform builder. And then you can see here I have a whole bunch of sub-projects. This is basically, basically code that I wrote or got from um, the Spark uh, website for different uh, drivers. Included it in my project and you know, pretty much built it. Um, it was pretty easy. I mean, it took to install the tools and get the, uh, the image for the device. Uh, the device I chose sitting at the top here is, a, is the Via Artigo. Uh, it took about a day to get a working image on the device. Uh, I don't have it up here, you'll see it when I show it to you. It, it took about three to four days for me to write my uh, C-sharp application that basically just sits on top of the CE shell. So it was pretty, I mean, it was pretty <coughs> painless really to get the tools and install it and do all this. Uh, other work. So, so it shows what you did. Yeah, moving on. So on the first monitor up here, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, cool. Good. So uh, this is my user interface. This is what I wrote in C sharp. Um, I have three buttons up here. We'll just go through them. The first one is music. So I'll go in here. I wanted to be able to basically browse music on a media server uh, and stream it to the device that was connected to speakers in a room or a system. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, I can see here I have some songs up. I can choose a song. It starts playing. It's pretty, and it, you know, not even that. I didn't make my own media player or anything. I just chose to include Windows Media Player and there's a you know, C-sharp uh, command to uh, API to just call Media Player and play the file. So this is just streaming audio yeah. into your player? Yeah, and all the streaming APIs and everything you need to, uh, to do that is in Windows CD. Part of that, that uh, catalog that uh, is there. So then also I can go back and it still stays up, so I can see the you know the audio and I can stop it. Uh, all right, we'll move on down to the next screen here, the bigger one. And uh, I also wanted to be able to do uh, pictures. I wanted to be able to basically go to the device and say, okay, do a slideshow of all my home photos. This is like a digital picture frame. Yes, yeah, exactly. Except that this probably costs. Well, I mean, the cost of the monitor and the device is maybe three hundred dollars. In a good quality USB picture frame, costs about two hundred dollars. So, and this does all the <laughs> other stuff. So you might as well. Take that. So, if I go into pictures, um, you can see I can browse my pictures. And I get kind of a preview mode, and I can, uh, you know, browse through them like that. 
these are some pictures of me making this thing, and I don't know if any of you are at ESC West, but the first model of this is what I made. Instead of this uh, cool plexiglass, it was basically a piece of cardboard with duct tape all around the back of it, holding everything on. This is a serious by the way. Yeah, this is Microsoft. Big budget. Right here for me. <laughs> um, so anyways, I can go into the slideshow, and it would just be a picture frame. It would just sit there and go through the pictures. You can, and it's, you're, you have total control. I mean, you write the code, so you can choose the rate at which it goes. You can make a little uh, application to change the rate if you wanted to. Um, this is Nick's house, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> this is my uh, work area. So then, you know, I also I want to be able to get out of it, obviously, so I can click exit. Um, so real quick, staying on this screen before I go to the third one, I want to show you guys this other button. So I have a robot cam button. Now if I go into it, it gives me this uh, basically control interface. Now, unfortunately, the robot was damaged when it, on shipping here, so it's not working. But I just wanted to show you what the interface was. Uh, the robot was controlled wirelessly over a, a wireless network. Um, and I would be able to connect to it and actually drive the robot, control it with these keys. And this box right here would stream back video. Um, the camera that was on the robot, I have uh, mounted right here. I spent all night changing all this stuff around last night. So. <laughs> Anyways, let me show you at least what the streaming video looks like, because that's actually kind of kind of neat. So if we can go up to the, the third monitor up here to the right, I'll show you. Uh, actually, I'll show you a couple things. First, I'll show you that uh, it really is running Windows CE. Uh, this is basically what I've done is I've exited out of my application into the real shell. And uh, last night, what I did basically is extract the, that camera program from the robot, the wireless streaming camera, and made a quick application that shows the camera, so you can see it's just pointing out there. It's kind of small, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's real. But I mean, it really is streaming. It's plugged into another Artigo, and it's streaming over the network to this application. It, it basically picks up these uh, media boopies, I like to call them, and then the, um, it just uses the uh, one of the streaming API sets. Uh, it was really quite simple. I wish the robot was here, but... Yeah, I missed the robot. <laughs> the robot was so fun last time. Yes, he was. The robot would come out from under the table and march out on the first stage. So I missed that part, but thanks very much, Nick. Yeah, you know, this is what, this is what I created. And I, I think it's really cool that you guys made a contest out of it. Uh, oh. I think you guys should definitely check it out if you're into this. It's really easy, and it's a little bit easier to interface with these, the hardware you guys have selected. It's just simpler, and it's not a, a pure development platform. Um, you can do a lot more things with it than just run, you know, uh, just have CD, you can use it for a lot of other things, so it's a good value. So how, so how long did it take you to do all this? So you've got streaming audio, digital picture frame scenario, robotics control. Yeah, I mean, the, like I said before, the, to get the image, to get this CE image running on a device, it took a day. Um, to write the other code, the, um, the streaming code and the the window, the CE shell that I showed you guys earlier, that took about three or four days. Um, but it's C sharp, so it, it's pretty simple. You don't have to go all the way down to native code in C. But, and if nobody else enters the contest, I will, and I don't mind taking home $15,000, so. Don't let that happen. <laughs> but anyways, okay, thank thanks you. a lot, everybody. Thanks, thank guys. You.